Well, good morning, good afternoon, our viewers, wherever you are. My name is Dr. Simon Kaziwe. I'm a medical officer. I'm also the clinical operations manager, Case Hospital. Well, self-medication, the term self-medication is broad. But to put it very simple, uh, self-medication is the individual selection and the use of pharmaceutical agents for a self-diagnosed condition. Uh, an example is me having a pain or fever, and then I straight away think it's malaria. Then I go to a small uh, drug outlet and I buy Coatem and I treat that condition that I have as malaria. That's what you call self-medication. First aid and self-medication. Well, now first aid is the emergency use of drugs for a symptom or an injury sustained before the full proper treatment is given. Okay? The key words there is emergence and it's in our anticipation that after a few minutes or hours you're going to get the full treatment. A while self-medication is use of drugs without knowing which condition you're treating and for whichever time that you may want. Now, uh, self-medication versus first aid. Once you do first aid for a particular condition, for example, I'll give you an example. Sometimes when you're doing first aid, it can actually end up into self-medication. I have a headache. I take my painkillers today. Well, they may work. And after the headache going away, I may think I don't need to see a doctor. So the next day, the same pain comes back. I take the painkiller again. So emergency treatment now becomes self-medication. But ideally, first aid should be given. First of all, there is a time limit to it emergence but also that very moment in anticipation either to see a doctor or to get full treatment um, first aid can be given both in hospital and at home and that's the difference while self-medication is entirely someone somewhere who takes a drug for a condition they think they are treating which may actually not be having Um, our viewers there need to know that self-medication is very dangerous. In the view that these are pharmaceutical agents, but they also have potential side effects. Now, because you are self-diagnosing, chances are high you'd actually be taking the wrong drug for the wrong diagnosis. Now, all the drugs we use have side effects, but we usually weigh the benefits versus side effects. Now, if you're taking a drug for a condition that you do not have, that means actually the side effects are going to come out boldly and they will be significant. So that's one. Two, um, there is a chance that if you're self-medicating, you could actually delay to seek the right treatment. Because I have a fever, I bought Coatem, I'm thinking I need to give it time to work. And yet possibly what I'm treating is something completely different. Okay, we've also seen cases of wrong administration of drugs because you're self-medicating, okay? Um, in this COVID era that we've had, we've seen people, when you look at the COVID, COVID-X uh, bottle, it's a hub, the indications are quite clear, but you've, even with that, for people that have bought it from particular outlets, we've had instances of people wrongly administering the drugs. I had a situation where someone actually gave the drugs through the vein, but we've also seen a number of them who are giving the drug through the nose. Yes, the ways of administration are very clear. So if you're self-medicating at home, chances are high you may actually give the drug wrongly. Okay? Then three, um, it's, there is a high likelihood that you may actually give a wrong dose. Okay? I do not know out there how many people know, apart from the simple drugs, how many people know, especially for the children, if I'm giving an antibiotic, the cough that I think the child needs to get an antibiotic for, how many meals and how many milligrams am I supposed to give for a particular age? So because of the self-medication, many times we end up giving wrong doses. Now, uh, there is also a risk um, of uh, give unmasking or rather masking 
symptoms and signs of a very severe disease. I'll give an example. You have an acute abdominal pain for which you take painkillers. Someone may treat it as an acute peptic ulcer disease. So you keep taking these drugs, on top of that you're taking painkillers, but what if you're actually masking symptoms from a cancer? So whenever you self-medicate without having expert opinion from a doctor, there is a chance that you may present in the hospital at, because all the signs and symptoms that might have been clear for this condition have actually been covered by the painkiller that you've taken. Now, not forgetting adverse drug reactions. Most of the drugs have side effects, but we also know there are individuals who are allergic to particular components in these drugs. I'll give an example. Many people know they are allergic to penicillins, right? So they know I shouldn't take penicillins. But how many of these who are allergic to penicillins know which particular drug categories fall under penicillins? You get it. So you go to a pharmacy, buy an antibiotic that falls in the same class of the drug you know you're allergic to. But because you're not aware, you actually take the drug. Then the other thing is drug to drug interactions and some of these are actually fatal that i'm taking drug a but because i'm taking drug a i shouldn't take drug b okay so i'm a non-hypertensive taking particular medicines possible i'm also taking drugs that prevent clotting and all that so i go to a pharmacy buy a drug a painkiller or something a headache or something completely different now this drug is going to directly interact with the other drugs that i'm taking and eventually the outcome could actually be fatal. So these are some of the poor outcomes or the things that we can end up getting when we choose to self-medicate. COVID herbal remedies, are they a form of self-medication? I would say yes and no. Um, I just said previously covid -X, has actually been approved and added onto the drug list that I can use to be able to manage COVID-19. And it's a hub, okay? Not only that, there are also other herbal drugs we actually use in hospital for managing of particular condition. So if you come and see Dr. Kazwe, who prescribes a herbal drug that has been packaged well with a clear active ingredient and a clear dos dosage, that is not self-medication. However, if you are back home and you get a headache or you get a fever or if you get any form of cough or flu and you quickly say this is COVID-19 and you go to the bush and possibly pick herbs A, B, C, D, mix them together, boil them together, use them in any way, that is self-medication. One, you're not sure that you actually have COVID-19. Two, you're not sure how much of this active ingredient you're actually taking. Three, you are not taking into account the possible side effects and possibly the interactions with other drugs that you're taking. Maybe the other thing that I shouldn't forget about uh, the bad issues that we get from self-medication is uh, drug dependence, okay? People that have chronic pains that choose to take painkillers for a long time, you realize that their pain threshold keeps increasing as time goes on. So someone who was able to kill their pain with just panadol, after some time, they are not able to. So they keep going up the ladder, up the ladder. And before you know, you are reaching in the range of drugs that can cause addiction. So even when the pain is away, you realize that you constantly need this drug for your day-to-day -day living. Possibly you can't sleep without this drug. And eventually, you are landing into a clear definition of drug addiction. Uh, in the era of COVID-19, again, we've seen a number of drugs being abused and self-medicated. One, of course, is vitamin C. We've seen people abusing painkillers and self-medicating on painkillers. We've seen people self-medicating on vitamin D and many other drugs and antibiotics. Well, these are good drugs and we actually use them for management of COVID-19. But these are not generic drugs that we should use for each and every patient. In fact, drug A may not be safe for a particular patient, patient, and B is safe. But people are getting a cocktail of all these drugs, put them together, and they begin taking. For example, right from the start of the pandemic, there are actually people that have been taking daily vitamin C up to now. You get it? 
but does vitamin C have uh, side effects? Yes, it does. One, you can actually get kidney stones because of excessive formation of uric acid and oxalate stones. You can end up with kidney stones from vitamin C. Two, it actually interferes with the absorption of other mineral elements, vitamin B12 and copper. So because of this, you end up with another condition affecting brain function and all that because you're excessively taking vitamin C. Three, uh, vitamin C itself enhances absorption of iron in the body. And usually for people that are anemic, if we are giving them an iron supplement, we add on vitamin C. But in this case, you are taking a lot of vitamin C, which is going to enhance absorption of a lot of iron. So eventually you're going to end up with a lot of iron in your body that may actually end up staining most of your organs because you have excess iron. So this also becomes a problem. When people take drugs without, you know, proper prescription for a long time, it becomes a challenge. So that is vitamin C. Um, we've also had uh, people abusing dexamethasone. I'm sure you've heard about that drug, okay? So it's not that every COVID-19 patient should actually get dexamethasone. We've seen people getting high blood pressure from this drug. We've seen people who have been diabetics, stable, they take this drug, their blood sugar goes out of control. Yeah. So these are things that can easily be sorted out when you go and pick your drugs from the doctor. However, when you choose to just buy these drugs out there, because you saw someone else using the same drug, it becomes a challenge. Three, and possibly the most important in COVID-19, is the way the disease is, this is a viral infection, and ideally we should be able to give chance for our bodies to fight this infection. Now, when you take a steroid, the steroid is going to impair the capacity of your body to fight these organisms. So, it's literally, extending the progression of the disease. Instead of the disease spending possibly three, four, five days with acute symptoms, it's going to take you two or three weeks with acute symptoms because you're impairing the capacity of your body to fight this. Uh, then the other drugs that have also been uh, self-medicated during COVID are antibiotics. Okay, azithromycin, amoxicillin, coamoxiclav, and all that. And it's not that every COVID positive patient needs antibiotics. In fact, the people that need antibiotics are possibly people that have developed secondary bacteria infections because of the virus. But we need to know this is a viral infection where antibiotics do not have a role. It's only your doctor that can be able to tell and justify that at this level, you need antibiotics. Now, a COVID-19 positive patient is someone who is actually at risk of ending up into hospital with more severe secondary bacterial infections and therefore they will need antibiotic treatment. Now, if you're someone who has been taking many of these already at home, you may reach in the hospital and realize that majority of the drugs we might use no longer able to work on you because of resistance. This is not a problem only for you, but it's a problem for the entire world. Drug resistance is on the increase and it's being driven by people who just walk in into a drug shop to buy drugs and use. Um, of course, the other effects of excessive use of antibiotics not prescribed by doctors is you can actually pick up a medical condition out of excessive use of antibiotics. God has made our bodies in such a way that there are particular organisms he has put in us and these organisms are normal where they are. So their presence actually protects the bodies. So once you take these antibacterial agents, they are killing the pathogens possibly that are there, but they are also killing the normal organisms you need. So the end result is your body is left unprotected. So because of it, you've seen people getting recurrent UTIs, candida infections, there are forms of diarrhea that are closely associated with antibiotic use called Clostridium difficile that could actually be fatal. So it's not something as simple as I've just used an antibiotic, I'm fine. The effects could actually be fatal eventually. Um, we've had herbal remedies since time memorial, possibly since uh, the, the, the creation of Earth. Our ancestors have used herbal remedies for treatment of bacteria infections, viral infections, and various other conditions. And also to note that even the drugs we use currently are all got from natural, uh, naturally existing uh, plants. Okay, so it's true, most of these plants could actually be having active ingredients to work on particular diseases. However, this is where the problem is. 
Um, when you choose to use a herbal remedy at the same time you're using a drug from the hospital, you actually don't know what is in this herbal remedy. So we are worried about three things. One of them is a drug-to-drug -drug interaction. This herb may render the drug you're taking inactive or may actually render it poisonous. Okay, the concentration of that particular drug may increase in blood, so eventually you end up with a drug-to-drug -drug interaction. Two, this herbal drug may actually render this drug inactive. Okay, that you need higher doses of the drug to be able to use it to give you the same effect that you desire when you're not on these herbs. We've seen, um, for example, I'll give again the example of Covidex, we've seen that in people that are diabetics, if you're taking Covidex, possibly you may need to see your doctor to adjust your doses that you're using for the diabetic medic management, because we know that in Covidex itself, there is a component that aggressively lowers your blood sugar. So if you maintain the same doses for diabetes that you're using, and at the same time you're using Covidex, you may realize your sugar levels may drastically fall. Okay? So because of this, we prefer not to use herbal remedies at the same time as using other drugs for the same condition. So you either first finish this lot of drugs, and after finishing that, you jump onto your herbs, or you can choose to use herbs alone. But we may not want you to use these two components at the same time. Our dear viewers again, thank you so much for listening to us. Uh, my name is Dr. Simon Kazue, a medical officer at Kess Hospital. I need to encourage and re-emphasize this to the public out there. Uh, much as our policy is open in Uganda that I can easily walk up into work, walk into any pharmacy, pick and drug that I need, uh, we need to emphasize that this policy and this act is very dangerous. It's dangerous for you, the patient, but it's also dangerous for the entire community at large. There are a lot of adverse effects that happen when you self-medicate. There are a lot of drug irregularities that happen when you choose to medicate. We've seen most of these patients end up into drug addictions, or we've actually seen most of these patients presenting late in the case of COVID-19 management, management because they are thinking they are taking a drug that is treating the condition they have only to reach hospital when it's too late. And my emphasis here is, if you're taking a drug as a first aid, it should not be repetitive. Take it today, go and see a doctor. The act of thinking the fever you have is malaria or treating every fever you get as malaria is wrong. It saves a lot of time, it saves a lot of money. Go see your doctor, let them find out what problem you have and they will be in position to prescribe the right and safe medication.